over to one lad. Lad, lad, lad. Not on a Wednesday night. Not a Monday night, like I said. Wait. But we you know transitions. We're our only bosses. So. What's up, our peoples? Our How are you peoples. all this lovely Wednesday evening? This, this lovely Wednesday Olympic evening. Lovely Wednesday Olympic evening, yes. Yeah. Um, the Olympics are afoot, and I'm thinking they're like getting towards the end, I think, or nearing the end. Um, I think that the rings the, uh, have to fill in all the way. Like, that's the point. Like, you. I don't. It, yeah. And. If they go too long, they make the Audi symbol. And if they go just right, they're not. Well, yeah. I think what really happens is the Olympics doesn't officially end until Sonic the Hedgehog collects all the rings. I, I think like that's that. what happens, technically speaking. I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> so always controversy surrounding the Olympics. Um, but I did hear something interesting. There was people complaining, and there's always complainers, right, in different areas about always. everything. But always. world stage, right? People are complaining that the United States is being too braggadocious about having – I haven't told you this. Yeah, about having – Yeah, we did talk about the, the Olympics. We'll, we'll give you that, guys, before this, and then yeah. we decided that's probably – That they're listing topic. themselves as the leaders in the medal race, mm -hmm. and – which is true. The U.S. does have the majority of the medals right now. So we have the okay. U.S. currently is at 79 medals. China's at 70. And then ROC, which is like the no, the no name, you know, brand, AOC's which is basically your brother. No, it's, ba well, it's basically oh. Russia, oh. right? Because Russia was banned from claiming it this year. Um, oh. Wait, so and they're at like 53. Okay. So because Russia doped, uh, four years or whatever, how many years ago, um, like majority of their athletes were caught to be doping. Right. Um, they got banned from actually claiming to participate in the Olympics this year. With jerks. Um, and, uh, but people are, there's controversy because the U S is saying, or people are saying the U S shouldn't claim to be on at the leaderboard right now because the United States only has 25 gold and China has 32 gold. Uh -huh. And if you're the lead, they're saying the leader should be based on the gold count, not on the total overall count. Um, I, I don't know. It, it seems a little bit like I feel people like are trying to like, be a little, you know, drama. Six dozen of one, six dozen of another kind of situation. I think that's how the saying goes, right? I have no idea. If anybody out there has heard that saying, first of all, confirm that it actually is a saying, because I think Jordan just made that totally up. No, I, but butchered, secondly... I butchered a real one. <laughs> it's, it's six of one, half dozen of another. Okay. It's like, okay, there it's you like go. saying there you go. the glass is half full, the glass is half empty. And it's not really like saying better a bird in a pan than two in a bush, right? No. Although I would say different. birds are better in a pan. Well, it depends on the bird. Actually, like I wouldn't eat a parrot, so that would be gross. I'd eat a parrot if I was hungry enough. Well, yeah, we didn't state the hunger level. I was just thinking, like, in my house, I'm not going to eat a parrot. What a privileged, what a privileged dude you are, not have I to just, consider I feel like I can parrots. make that statement confidently, that I would not partake in any parrot eating <laughs> in our house. So the Olympics, how much of it have you watched? Um, I have watched... Basically, only little tiny clips because it's damn near impossible to watch the Olympics. Like, what's I feel like. Your, what's it's, your favorite it's... sport that you wish they covered more? Well, um, I'm a huge fan naturally of the interpretive dancing and the flag waving. Naturally, who isn't, right? Um, obviously. obviously. So you no, like, but I mean, I... you like the opening ceremony. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Good but no, know. I wish it would be easier to watch like the, the East or the, not the esports, the, like the, the bikes and the skateboarding right. and kind of some more of the street, street park sports. Um, they're not that easy to watch. I know there's a time delay, mm -hmm. but pretty much Peacock or what is it? NBC? Is that who it is? Yeah. P Peacock we is gotta, we gotta do, we gotta do something about this guys. The monopoly and the difficulty of watching the Olympics kind of defeats the entire point yeah. of having a worldwide accessed Olympic games when nobody can actually easily watch it. 
Like it's yeah. it's absurd. It's so monopolized. How do you feel about it, Jordan? I hate it. I w- <laughs> I so like outside of just like the weird political stuff, and people could argue with me all day long that the the political stuff is not political, that it's needs to be there. Like you're just wrong, and that's okay. You can be wrong. Um, but I got less excited about the Olympics over like the last eight years simply because of what you said. They have been bad at at televising it. They're bad. But they're like, we're going to do it on our one channel. I'm like, why not? Here's my idea. Why not take it away from NBC or keep it with them? But they have to stream mm. every sport live on a different YouTube channel and leave the video on demand up. They can have ads. They can still run ads, all that kind of stuff. But leave it on there so that I can go to the Olympic channel and I can see all the different streams of the different things live and I can see them in their entirety and not on their crappy piece of shit app. Bro, but I will not oh, download I love it. You're preaching to the choir. I will, I will I not think, download it. I have not watched this much of the Olympics. Probably I think in the as last a country, like, three or four Olympics. As a nation. If we are going to say this is a national sport then or national event, then we need to make it accessible to the nation right. and and not make it a monopolized with one individual group. I think even honestly, if it's if it's something that the athletes are funded, I don't know if this is entirely no. true, but no. are athletes, do they get any type of national funding or governmental I, assistance? I've been told that most of the Olympic athletes aren't super well paid (laughs) yeah i think unless they're like in their respective pro sport or something outside of it but maybe i'm wrong i just i've never yeah if you guys know like let us know wealthy let us know if any of you know but i'm i i don't think they get federal funding but um i'm sure if they they do i'm sure they don't pay their own way to get there but like i don't think they're getting you know a six digit income from being there or whatever well, and so. it's also difficult because it's a, like it's four years of buildup, right? Or however many, four to ten, whatever, how long you're preparing for it. So it'd be weird for somebody to be employed by the government to play a sport for that many years before they get to that level. Right. But regardless, the nation as a whole, if we want it to be a national event, I think we need to maybe make it a regulation that that broadcast has to be shared to multiple organizations and sites yeah. because otherwise it like, won't truly it, be appreciated. Make it available to everybody. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. And the fact that if, if, if NBC is not the answer, right, then give it to someone else. Yeah. I'm done with them. Yeah. Well, I say, I don't even think it should be one network. I mean, I think it should be whoever wants to broadcast it, take opportunity to do so. Like, if and if if you provide a better streaming service, if you provide a better um, platform, right. then that's your that's to your credit, right? Absolutely. Um, like, but but the monopolizing because the other thing I I guess the trick is is the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, they they're a private organization, so they're making money off of these networks getting exclusive deals right right so that's where it's also kind of like this corrupt thing where it's like the ioc obviously they've i'm sure over the years everybody's heard stories about corrupt issues with ioc and doping and taking money and you know favoritism and different things like that um what if they just but in general instead of doing like nbc and all these independent deals where these networks pay i bet they'd make more money if they just kept their own content and hired a film crew to just stream it all like, mm. just throw a giant middle finger to all the networks and say, sorry, it's going to be all video on demand, live streaming online. That's and we get, all the, we get all the proceeds, and you get none of it. Sorry, you suck, and you were bad at this. <laughs> sorry, you suck. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it does suck. It does suck. It's gotten to the point, and with the amount of accessibility that we have in this world, to right. not be able to watch the Olympics, there's really no excuse for it. There's right. really no excuse for it. It's just, right. it's an, it's a, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, I, Katie I, Patty one... totally agrees. She's like, yep. So frustrating. Oh yeah. That, that was up yep. on our screen for a bit there. Um, yeah, I, I would really love to, well, I've always wanted to watch trampolining as a kid. Like I didn't even know until I saw like a hmm. split second of it one time. And I'm like, why are they not showing that? Like instead we got to watch like underaged girls 
that probably are too young to be in the Olympics dance around in swimsuits, I would rather watch the trampoline. Like, that's amazing. Hmm. I, know. I yeah, know a lot of people like cool. gymnastics, but I'm I'm not a fan. It's been overplayed. It's like ice skating. It's ice skating's all they play in the Winter Olympics. And it's like, can you just show me nine hours straight of curling? I'd rather have that. It does seem like the majority of the sport events are gymnastics that we cover, but I mean, there's I don't know how many events. Let's look it up. I'll look it up. How many? Yeah. How many there's, different? Who was there? Like many? running guns and there's all Olympic. kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, that actually, they do. track is a, track is a pretty big thing. There's a lot of coverage for track. There is. Um, yeah, that's true. How many how many Olympic sports? Summer sports is what we're looking for, though. Sports are there. Okay. And the, and the, uh, let's see. The pummel pony. There's tw okay. There's 28. Wow. There's 28 um, Olympic summer sports. That's it. Okay. I feel like yeah, should, that's what it maybe says. they're so it's like track and field like one because I feel like they've got 20 um, events in it of themselves. Right. Because um, right, right away, like the 100, 200, 400 relay. Yeah, track and the, field like falls they got, into they've one. got like 28 on their own. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That falls into one. Okay. Um, I was but then there's really one that I, like, I never hear about on, like on NES. Do you, I don't ever hear about the pentathlon. Whoa. What you ever is hear that? about? No, no, no. A Tell me about this. How many? That sounds. It's. I've never even heard of the pentathlon. Sounds like a, a really good way to, to overexert yourself. Well, that'd be nine, right? Pent? Or, I think that's yeah, five. Pent, right? Like a uh, pentagon is five. Oh, yeah. Pentagon five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember nine. Uh, no, nine would be a ninagon. Nine, no. Meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oc. Non. Nonagon. It'd be non. I'm not a gun. It's just non-existent. It's not even there. It'd be a, That's why they yeah, don't have it. They were like, well, we can't do nine because then it's not there. So yeah, five. Pen. Okay, so this is interesting. This is what it includes. This is crazy. Uh, oh, wait. Was that what uh, Bruce Jenner was? Or what's her name? Whatever. Uh, Caitlin. Caitlin Jenner. Yeah, whatever. Um, the the, the uh, future governor of California. Uh, involves fencing. So sword fighting, which is mm -hmm. fascinating. I like that. Fencing, Wait, that's one of the shooting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. fencing, shooting. So far, we're building warriors. Swimming. Okay. Gotta get across cross the moat. Cross country running. Yeah. Cross country Gotta running. Get to the moat. And riding horses. <laughs> I would not have guessed riding the, horses. That is. That is. Those are all the things that a knight must be good at. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. You, I like no, it. No, I did not know that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, so there it's, is... It's also um, the only sport that when you win, you get knighted. Okay, I will say, my wife was playing uh, the synchronized swimming. Mm. Dude, they are like... That's legit. Robots. It's yes. insane. I don't know if anybody out there has listened to that or watched the Listen synchronized to it. swimming. Listening to yeah. synchronized swimming is a lot like listening to Inya. Not too fun. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of splishy-splashy. Yeah, just... Oh, Oh, handball. Did you know handball was no. one of the Olympic, the Summer Olympic events? That would be fascinating to watch. Wow. Um, that's a, that's now a, they have mountain biking. That's cool. That is cool. Hmm. And canoe. Yeah, of course, canoeing. Sailing. Hmm. The rowing? Yeah, see, none of this rowing stuff. Is we like don't get to see crazy. any of this. I know, yeah. Rowing is nuts. I, you watch those guys, and it's like, oh, my gosh. They are, they're going faster than my car can go on the water with their yeah. arms like yeah and, the and world... you know all those guys skip leg day like they they probably like are just like no no they legs. use the legs to push they use the legs no, to push the rope it's funnier to think they, they slide they forget it <laughs> it's fun you're, you're um the <laughs> last thing i have to say about the olympics is yes. um the the final battle between the battle the final battle for gold, yeah, right, came down to two Chinese fellows, and it was I watched a YouTube clip of that, and it was mind bending how fast they were going back and forth with each other, like the amount of Adderall that they had to be on to concentrate and focus on that ping pong ball is like kamikaze amount of Adderall, dude. Really? It was like bananas fast. It was really cool to watch that battle. Um, the, the Chinese gold medal ping pong i don't know what you'd call it ping pong tournament um pretty cool pretty cool stuff though um so that's mostly what i wanted to say about olympics um 
Right. I, so I have... spe- speaking of Olympics, hang on. You, uh-huh. you've got to see this. I, I saw this today and I don't know why. Like, and it just, what you just said, like running really fast, you made me think of this. So Usain Bolt, kind of a fast guy, also a, a very fitting last name, right? So today I saw this video, I was like, this is, I didn't know how this was going to go, um, but I'll show it to you. This is Usain Bolt racing some astronauts Whoa. in a low gravity airplane. Okay. So they're going to sprint. <laughs> watch him watch he's like oh no gonna fall gonna fall somersault Hilar- and... i don't even know if he won oh he did no no he's coming back they they didn't they didn't make it back and so he's like yay yay and then he has to like swing and hang on to the ceiling oh my gosh i isn't would that, love to do that isn't that amazing would you do that oh yeah in a heartbeat remember we talked about going to space like i if i would do that of course i would do the gravity airplane Oh my gosh, that looks really fun. That looks really fun. Oh my gosh, I would 100% do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So something kind of uh, pretty monumental happened this past week um, pertaining to podcasts. Um, okay. And I, I, I don't think you've had the opportunity to listen to this specific one. No. Um, but I, but... I have heard her interviewed. You heard her interview on a different uh, platform, mm-hmm. um, but a young lady, not by the name of Yanomi Park, uh, was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, um, and it's episode, for everybody out there listening to this, uh, it's, it's episode 1691, and I've listened to Looks like this. hundreds, hundreds, yes, that's it, perfect, maybe thousands of podcasts and different episodes, right, throughout the years. Um, and without a doubt, this is probably in the top five of the most important episodes or mm. podcasts I've ever listened to. What did you um, think was most important about it? Because I think that you and I had there, different takes several be- things just based on <laughs> yeah. the different directions the different interviews went. So mm-hmm. I found that interesting. Yeah, there's several things that I think are important. F- uh, first and foremost, it's a very sobering, um, reality check on the dangers of communism mm. and the uh, ways it can be abused. Um, and so what this is, is this is a young lady who escaped from North Korea with her mother when she was a teenager. And now she's like 25, I think, or 24 or something like that. Um, so she's been out for about, I think, eight years or nine years. Um, but her experience is something that puts you in, in almost an alternate universe, really. Yeah. Um, her her life was every day a situation that was for survival, but also at the same time, it was a situation where she didn't even grasp the reality of how desperate she was. Um, she never had the concept of being full. She said she'd right. never had a, the concept of... Um, knowing that you could eat too much. Um, her, her family, her dad was, you know, put into prison because he, um, bartered with somebody for some food. Um, she, she described like her living arrangements, like basically you're in, in communist, tri- uh, North Korea, everything belongs to the state, right? So everything you, even if you grow something that belongs to the state, So you're not really allowed to have your own farm. You're not allowed to have your own vegetables. If you eat, she said, basically all you ate was like wild leaves that you could find in the forest or crickets were when the, she said crickets were their main source of food. Um, She like their fecal matter because North Korea doesn't have um, the resources to buy fertilizer. You are required to collect your feces at the end of every day and provide it to the state. The kids bring it to the school. The kids bring it to school. You don't have running water, of course. Um, She would talk about how young children and infants would walk around the streets with organs hanging out of their back because in gestation, the mother didn't have enough vitamins to basically, it's called spina bifida, and the mother didn't have enough nutrients to help form the spinal column. Um, and so there was an opening in their back where you would, you would see young kids with basically part of their intestines hanging out their back and their spinal, spinal. How, how long could someone survive um, like that? 
Well, you know, that's a very interesting thing because usually the risk of infection is wildly high, obviously. Right. Um, and then, um, <laughs> and then, um, also the risk is, uh, Usually there's a there's a high risk for paralysis in that situation if there's any type of nerve involvement to the to the spinal column. Um, so I mean I guess survival I, I can't see him making it out of childhood. I don't know how he would. Right. Um, but it it was it was every single thing that she did and she went through. It almost is like a story. Like every five minutes it's something new that you're just like oh my god I can't believe this person went through that. Um, so what do you and, think, did, did she point out in this one? Cause like Haley did mention, she said I heard her on Jordan Peterson. I would recommend that one too. I think I put it in our past links. I'll try to remember to put it in these ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yes, I did listen to that. Um, but did she point out anything or did you come away with anything that, I mean, when I would listen to those things, I'm like, okay, how does this apply to where we're at right now? Like mm-hmm. in our country? Cause you know, at one point their country wasn't like that. It hasn't been that long actually that their country has been that bad. I think that, that places like China, places like China are just a few generations away from being that bad. They're already fairly, fairly bad. Um, um, what did you see? Like that maybe concerns you in our society that you're like, Oh, that might be changing my mind about that. Or we need to like really crack down on not doing that. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a tight, it's a slow titration at first. Mm -hmm. So it shows the dangers of silence. Um, it shows the dangers of, of, of restrictions of free speech. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from free speech goes a lot of other areas that you get a loss of freedom. And you saw that in her world. Um, there was, there was kind of, she, she had mentioned that, um, you know, you, her mother had explained to her the most dangerous thing, the most dangerous weapon is your tongue, because if you say anything out of line, then your neighbor is required by law to tell the government, and if they don't tell the government, then they themselves will get executed. Like yeah. you can get, you could get executed if you have too much dust on a picture frame of Kim Jong Un. Like that's they go through your house and they do inspections every month, and if you have dust on a picture of Kim Jong-un, you're, you go, you're sentenced to death. But in general, for our country, um, there's a, a need, um, to be cautious as far as government regulation, government control. Um, but also with society in general, um, being afraid to say what they do and don't want in their country, because Mm -hmm. she talked about how her great grandmother, or maybe grandmother, I can't remember. What Their society had known freedom mm-hmm. at one point, right? They had known freedom, um, but because of the new rules that were instituted, as far as like, w- basically, you know, the government's going to provide for you. Um, they started slowly losing a lot of privileges. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it terrifying. Yeah. Uh, Haley was saying that they they can get food for themselves and their family if they spy and turn each other in. Um, yeah, that's true. They are a, um, a a society that constantly lives in fear. And and what's very interesting is the government. She talks about like um, why that government because they actually are offered aid from other countries. Um, the United Nations has offered to provide them food in different situations and medicine in different situations. But it's it's really – it's not that they can't get it. And it's not even about their policies that North Korea – like their nuclear policies. But the government themselves want the people to be weak. Like they want there to be sickness because it's easier to control them. Right. Um, mm. There was a, a really interesting thing about – she talks about um, – different levels of society like rankings classes and if if you're in a class i think she said there's like 40 different classes in society about 40 or something like that maybe a little more um if you are yeah that she knew of um but if you're if you're a guy and say you're you're like in the 15th class of society you can never marry up and a female can never marry up you can only marry down so, and if you marry down, 
you can never that person can't come up to your level you, you only you go down to there so that keeps people down um and the that's awful. the ranking yeah it's really it's really wild um and there's no like earning your way up to a higher level in society which is fascinating it's it's whatever your great grandfather your great grand great grandmother or whatever it's whatever their ranking was mm-hmm. that's where you always your family will always be um so going to the like being able to speak opinions and all that kind of stuff. I think that I would agree. I think that's one of the most important things to, to hold on to, which is why I think it's, it's, I think that's why they made it like our first amendment, right? They knew that that was the most important thing to cherish and hang on to. It's like people have to be able to, to have an opinion and their belief. So, you know, we've talked about this in the past and everything like that. How do you think did that, did that make you, that make you think about like, we're, we're not only, we're not regulating a lot of how people speak. We're letting our unelected corporations regulate how people speak on the platforms that are available. Did it make you think about that? Or because that's what it made me think about. I was immediately like, oh my gosh, this is I think, this, this is why it's a big deal. I didn't I didn't had it seen framed that way. Yeah, I, I, I can see a correlation there. Um, I think the separation a little bit is that they're not government organizations where these were government organizations that were making these calls Mm. and that's where it's a little bit of a of a separation to a degree there um now except the risk the the risk well let me finish the risk runs is if those private organizations then become regulated or Mm -hmm. become taken over by the government control i was going to say that's where you run risk because what we saw what we've seen this last few years is is not we have people that are arise against anti-fascism and again and saying like well we need they're actually calling for marxism but instead really what they're against is corporatism which is what we're seeing now is not the government keeping more control the government is being more controlled by the corporations who are unelected so that was my fear was like oh if that's the way things are going then it doesn't matter if the government's doing it if the corporations are doing it if they're really in charge it's whoever's in charge that is that is going to suppress the people right because if they're because at at that point like if the government say that their government owns everything and has everything and everything is theirs well if these corporations keep gobbling up what if they become the entity that everything is theirs they only lease to you they keep ownership your phone's not really yours it's really ours your you know your house you where you live all that kind of stuff that kind of starts to look like it if you think about it from a like a possession standpoint, which is the way they think about it. It's just a little yeah, bit and different. I think yeah, I get what you're saying because you can't. You're you're basically saying to a degree these corporations end up taking over the government to a degree is what you're kind of alluding to. Right. Um, which is I wonder I what think, happened there. Maybe it did. No, in 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 from what I had understood, it wasn't organizations. It was actual governmental mm-hmm. control because what was what was happening is. Um, the the real uh, loss of control it was implemented during and where it got you know especially heavier restrictions and issues was when um, during kind of the downfall of the USSR mm-hmm. um, as well so because there was decreased supply because Russia and China were heavily supplying North Korea because they wanted basically North Korea is the buffer zone, right? North Korea is a buffer zone between capitalistic South Korea and the U S and great Britain and a lot of other societies that don't run off of communism. Mm -hmm. Um, and as soon as Russia was, um, kind of falling apart, a lot of supplies was decreased for the, from the government who was saying, Hey, we can provide everything because we're a communist society. And so once they started having less supply, there was also increased regulation that was implemented to help control the demands that the people were then asking for. Um, It makes you wonder, like, so like we know, like, you know, we looked at what was that was that last week or the week prior that we looked at like the debt and it showed like our GDP, how much we make estimated as a country and all that kind of stuff. mm -hmm. I wonder, like, per because if you could figure out like per person what value is placed in by people. If they're all that poor, or a lot of them are predominantly are that poor, and there isn't a lot of upper class people, I wonder how much, like, 
how much wealth there actually is in that country. I mean, to the individuals, the vast majority of them, there's no wealth. Whatsoever. Right. But at the very top, like they're getting everything. But I wonder if they're like mm -hmm. not even as rich as our richest person. Oh, I got what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I would. That would be an interesting study to that, do because it would show that even at the top, communism doesn't work. Like even yeah. if you are that guy on the very top, because you're you're not allowing free enterprise and freedom to trade and create and all that, you're not doing all that. You're not actually producing as much as you would have, even though you have control and power. So then, what do you really want? Do right. you really want the control and power? Do you really want? Do you want prosperity and wealth for well, your I people? Think so the like from what i was understanding unless you're kim jong un or within his specific circle of privileged individuals mm -hmm. like th there's very very few but if you're those very few select individuals then those are pretty much the only ones that are going to have the luxuries of the world you know right. because even like kim kim jong un you know like he spent most of his uh, young adulthood in europe right um he was, you know, got his school. He went to schooling there and he, he imports, you know, all these fancy, you know, Mercedes and different things from other countries. And so like he I himself how he gets the money life. for that, because who's going to take their money? Like if you think about international exchange, like they're like, well, your money's not really worth anything. Oh, else. no, no. So this is this is this is how they get a lot of funding. It's very interesting. Um, one of the ways is they have. <clears throat> so they send a lot of their people to prison, right? And to mm -hmm. different types of like constant, like I guess you would call them concentration camps, but the whole entire country basically is a concentration camp right now. Um, but they send a, a, a vast number of their young men and laborers mm -hmm. to other countries that are mm -hmm. friendly to North Korea and all of their wages go back to North Korea. So they're required to whatever they earn they're required to send that back to the government of North Korea. So they have a workforce that goes to like Saudi Arabia, Russia, um, parts of uh, East Africa, and they basically are earning money for their country under threat of if they don't send the money back, they'll kill their family yeah. <laughs> and their kids, 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 you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty... It, it almost makes you feel like I had a, I had a couple people that listened to this and um, every person was like, so what do we do about this? How do we how do we help these people? What What is the solution here? Because people, you know, take on feel a little bit responsible for like there's this atrocity. There's this concentration camp going on basically um, to an entire country. How do we adjust uh, address this? Um mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? How do you think? What do you think a possible a solution to us helping them, or mm -hmm. a solution to yeah, us well, helping, helping from people. becoming them? <laughs> well, I think I think helping those people that are in that horrible situation. Yeah, I think it's hard. I mean, I think that we've for sure gone to countries that are that have done worse than or done less than this, and helped to stabilize them. I think that some you could make an argument was a bad idea. Um, I think this would take it would take a bunch of larger countries willing to mobilize and and work to remove that regime and replace it but it couldn't be necess it, it would have to be gradual because you couldn't like those people are they're not educated a lot of them um that's really hard i don't I don't know that I have a great answer, but I think it would take more than just like, say, the United States going in there. I think people would really, really hate that. I think that would cause wars. But I think that if if nations went in with the intent to say, hey, you know what? This is a big world and this can't this kind of stuff can't go on. I think honestly, though. You you almost have to deal with with China first, like because you're just going to get stopped if you because they would just see the writing on the wall and be like, uh oh and probably get pretty mad and probably form an alliance with them. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know that there's a good answer. I don't know that there's a clean answer. And that's the thing is like, people are like, if you want world peace, that's great. That's, that's great. It's never going to happen. But, 
um, because there are, are bad people. Um, but that would cause war. Like you would be, you would essentially be dooming yourself to a war to make that happen. So, so and that's probably why no one's touched it. It's because they know, like it's, it's that deeply rooted of an issue. Joe, Joe Rogan, the guy that had this young lady on, he asked her. He's like, "What can we do? Mm -hmm. What, what is a possible way of approaching this?" Um, and it, it was a, a solution that made make, made a lot of sense. Um, basically, it's through doing things like this. Talking about it's it. by having conversation to continue to snowball into a larger conversation right to then not let it just be brushed under the rug and to in 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 the hopes of putting pressure on the communist party of china because essentially china's main goal with north korea is to have a buffer zone right they want that buffer zone between the united states south korea um they want that that kind of safety net in between other capitalist societies. Mm -hmm. So the only way really change can happen to the starving, dying, persecuted, essentially, you know, Holocaust like individuals in North Korea are to have enough pressure from multiple or nations, national pressure to make it so unpopular for the, those people to be in such a desperate situation that China themselves have to make a change and have to recommend and put pressure on Kim Jong-un then as well yeah, and I mean, or allow it's not allow gonna just other be, that government is not going to like like no matter what we did like Saddam Hussein was not going to just be like you know what guys you're right like we probably should be a more free society it maybe it's not going to look just like you but I sh we should we should stop all this nonsense. Like that's just not going to happen, right? And so I don't see that happening with with China. I don't see that happening with North Korea. It's going to take. I mean, you look if you look at just our country, like it took the people rising up and saying, you know what, enough's enough. We're drawing a line in the sand. This is our declaration. This is what we're doing. And then, just like I said before, it's it was a war. Like you're you're committing to fight for future generations and potentially never see it. And that's like that's the beauty of what we have. And have we done have we done bad things? Have we have we done things wrong? Every single country, every single person on the planet has. Like, mm -hmm. so maybe some are worse than others. I get it. You know, that's why some people are in prison, or whatever. But we have tried to make it better along the way. Like we did dumb things, and we're like, whoa, that's dumb. We need to back up. Let's fix that. And we're still doing that because we're not perfect. Um, <laughs> and I think that we still need to continue to look at it. And when I see when I hear things like this. There were, I think I, I messaged you earlier today that, that PayPal, it's PayPal, Facebook are beginning to check people and see if they get flagged for anti, how do they put it, anti-government rhetoric and then kicking them off of their services, their payment services specifically um, to allow them, to not allow them to, to, to do things. It was... Um, it was this week, the, there was a funding for, uh, oh, it was, it was health coworkers that did not want to be forced to take the vaccine. They raised money for a defense to say, let's make this a choice, not a force and GoFundMe canceled them, canceled their funding and said, nope, sorry, we, we're not going to allow this on our platform and then returned everyone's money. They'd raised like $40 million or something like that. And so when I when I hear things like that, where these corporations are now making the decision, like there wasn't any, there's nothing illegal. They didn't say we're going to we're going to see if they're doing something illegal. It's it's anti-government rhetoric. I mean, how many things do? And did did GoFundMe many, label it as we're not doing this? It said we do not allow anti-government rhetoric. I didn't read rhetoric. their exact. Statement, did they say anti-government no, 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 rhetoric? That, that or was, somebody... Sorry, that was separate. I'm just I'm looping them into a funding. Oh, that is I thought saying, they were saying anti-government yeah. rhetoric now the gofundme thing like they should have said right they would have known right from the beginning but then all of a sudden they're like oh we don't like this propaganda so we're just going to get rid of it they could have just left it alone it was not it doesn't mean gofundme agrees with it they're just a funding a, a funding website will you post the comment <laughs> that josh made he made a really good comment i'll read it out um he says what's amazing is when someone is at a point 
when they are where they are convinced that they are fine and you are coming to kill them instead of liberating them not knowing that the persecution that they are in mm -hmm. yeah like the, the the people in north korea are so oblivious they don't know they don't know what's going on outside of their world they were they're being told that everybody wants to come to them they're saying like everybody wishes they could live in their environment right now um right. and my uh my mom made an interesting comment saying so that, that you know yeah human trafficking is atrocious from north korea to china yeah i yes, really want people is. to listen to this interview so i wasn't trying i was trying to like not go into too much detail because i do know we both of us know more of the story but i, I really want people to listen to it just mm -hmm. to, there's, there's if not if nothing else to have the conversation to make it known but also to look around and go how how am i how am i asking others to maybe do things that i i want to force them to you know i think like it's even good just I being think it's, that you know i think it's okay to talk about these things because i think people will get more enticed to hear it if they hear part of the subjects like we're not gonna say the entire stories oh but... no no no. yeah i was just saying like <laughs> that that was part of it and it, it's a crazy part of her story oh yeah that... guys so part of the thing that's crazy about this human trafficking that's going on from north korea to china is uh, so, so north korea does not want people to be trafficked to china so that let me let me say that first kim jong-un believes if people are trafficked especially women are trafficked to china it will be the downfall of north korea they this lady was talking about that which is interesting um <laughs> he, and, and and part of that is just basically he i think he is recognizing there's an issue if you lose all your your women then your population also decreases right well, that's why the women um, are trafficked to china is because they have a lack of women to men there's such a massive lack of women in china right because they had the one child rule for so long mm -hmm. um so there's this huge demand for females to be trafficked to china but this is the other crazy thing and this was just mind-blowing to hear this human trafficking not just for like sex slavery but human trafficking for organ collection mm -hmm. is one of the largest commodities for human trafficking in china right now and what's happening is a lot of middle eastern countries like uae and um <clears throat> uh, qatar and a lot of these wealthier middle eastern countries are flying to china and within 24 hours whatever organ they need they can get donated to them. Like she's talking about like how it's like, it's one of the hottest things on the market right now is to be able to go to China and know instantly you'll have access to a, essentially you're having access to a North Korean refugees organ. It seems like if they weren't that healthy, it's not, maybe not something you'd want unless they like fatten them up first <laughs> or get them healthy. And maybe they are, maybe they are. I mean, really they're like, like oh, that's this not, is that great. Would... And then they're like, wait, who are you? Yeah. yeah, and and what what was interesting is a lot of the the refugees that escape from North Korea to China, then what they try to do this is the next goal, this is the big goal, to escape from China to Mongolia, because once you get to Mongolia, South Korea has several U.S. or not U.S. embassies, but several embassies and uh, refugee asylum seekers there. Uh, locations and, then they and so to integrate then, them into society and then they integrate them back into south korea from mongolia so the but they have to cross a desert to get from china to mongolia and so she talks about her crazy you know challenge of crossing a desert what if that was an answer mongolia. is you just like you just secretly go in and like just keep taking hundreds and hundreds of people <laughs> out to free countries oh yeah like siphon the country well mm -hmm. that's she's saying though now um ref, she's saying that that way the way she was trafficked out is impossible now she really? said that north korea is highly locked down escaping mm -hmm. so there used to just be guards kind of guy guarding certain borders and certain fences now it's all over. um but now now they've implemented they've increased the number of you know barbed wire fencing guards but then they also have th like the entire border of where there's proximities to China and South Korea is all laden with landmines now. So there's landmines everywhere in there. So there's no way you're either going to get shot, cut up by barbed wire, or you're going to blow it's up like from a landmine. It's like being stuck like in the Hunger Games, and the whole or of, or, and the whole rest of the Auschwitz. world is going on, and you don't yeah, know it's it. It's Auschwitz. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's really a pretty crazy thing. She was, t- yeah, it's, it's crazy. She was talking about these things called, um, uh, part of, a like, basically they don't have the, the term for I, they only have the term for we. So there's no like, yeah. I like this or I want this. It's we, because it's a, it's a communist society. It's for everybody. Um, there was no term for like, love you, dad. Like she never had the concept of love. That was never something that she that they were taught. Um, That's so it's there's weird. just so like, many. You, yeah, I don't know how you get there that quick. It makes me wonder. Like, I would love, I would love to go back Ugh. and figure out like what exactly. I I would think, like like going back. Like I I, w- I would talk about this for hours, but we just can't. Um, when I was looking at this the payment stuff, and now these companies. So I, I had read something earlier this week. and I, So the payment thing is like this is PayPal is now going through and figuring out who is doing what. And it's anti-government stuff. Just like they she could not talk against her government. You can't have your own thoughts. You can't have your own opinions. We're talking about free speech. What you can say, they're censoring people using payment methods just because of the way that they feel like they think. Not even that they acted on, not that they did anything illegal. If they do something illegal, for sure, shut them down and work with the authorities to do that. But they're not. And it made me, it, it, I had that in mind. And I read a post because we're, we, you know, our, our government's like been printing money. We've talked about that, all that kind of stuff. And we talked about the debt last week and, and everything. And someone made a compelling argument that our main export is the US dollar. And that's what, the one reason why we want the whole world to be pegged to it is that people want to get the US dollar. And so that's allowed us as a government and as corporations and everything to basically go hog wild spending and creating money because everyone else wants it. And you create, there's, there's the supply demand issue and a liquidity issue all at once. And it's like coming to a head. And what she was making this, this, this Twitter post was making a, like a, argument for is making the u.s dollar easier to get and easier to use so that it becomes even more prevalent in the world and then start scaling back the supply so this is this is something that's interesting like essentially um they're they're talking about making the the digital usd token Mm -hmm. right um which there's many of them and that and it's called a cbdc it's like it's a it's just a, a government coin that they could then distribute. And so I, I bring those two up in tandem for a reason. And that is because what she's saying is like, these should be networks that are, they're not, they're not the governance of it. The U S government mm. still is. Mm-hmm. And so, because we're, we're in a broken system where we have all these payment type systems where they're the governance of it. And you know what they're governing? They're holding and governing and regulating themselves our main export that's what paypal is doing right right the and US so dollar. Th- that's where i was making that argument for i think the corporations have become the power that would be in the picture of north korea <clears throat> and that they are take they're like an unelected official they've gotten so bloated and big now they're even controlling our money and how we well, can access it and and this is this is something you like obviously you know, corporations in general, like, I think there's, it's such a weird thing because you want to have freedom of, you know, capitalist societies, freedom for these businesses to make their own decisions Mm -hmm. and not be told like you have to make a cake for somebody if you don't want to make a cake for somebody. Um, just let them be, but, but they they make it, but at the same time, but then at the same time though, Mm -hmm. in this situation, if this is a company that like PayPal and they are then regulating how people can spend their money, then it's like, uh, is there, so it's like, it's a really hard balance of when does the government play a role in what a company can and can't do. Um, and that's, that's, well, it's a, that's where I'm a, saying like, so it's, it's we have the New York line. stock exchange, right? They're, a, they're not a governmental agency, but they are regulated by the sec. They don't make decisions. Right. The securities and exchange commission does. So with money, who should make the decision? Money's at hand, not PayPal mm-hmm. because they're handling a commodity that isn't theirs it's a digital commodity that is the government's it's regulated well, and what's by the also government. what also comes scary is like if you have a large organization or company 
and they have enough power and enough influence, they have the ability to vote as well. Like they cast, they have ability to, oh, not vote, but lobby, right? Right. Um, as an organization. And that is also a kind of a scary thing because then that passes laws that then, that can potentially pass laws that then are for their benefit to then control the population yeah, too. I'm, I'm less concerned with that than I am with the, the intertwining and like basic, basic like corporatism. Like you see, like, like it was, it's regardless of how you feel about like our elections, I think it was bad and wrong that we allowed Facebook to put $400 million into certain states to help their voting. Like, I think that looks very suspect. Don't, no, no, no. We pay taxes and the voting is handled by the states. Don't let private organizations come in and have a hand in that. That's a bad idea. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want. But I think super PACs do that. I think there's not it's not just Facebook like super PACs and other PACs do that already. Face it's right. not a first time. If they're set up as like a that. nonprofit or something and they're helping to do that and then they're providing volunteers that are then trained to go through the system, but it was it was specifically like millions and millions of like you can they couldn't do that. Like these are these are blank checks that that are being written to get agendas through to to do these things. And, and that's like a whole other complex mm. issue, but my point was is when you allow these things to be controlled by unelected things it's like having like this it's like having our presidency and then on the side you have a king and you've got these multiple kings that are controlling regardless regardless of whether this is what it is regardless of whether it's a government or whether it's a corporation that Mm -hmm. has massive control over the, the the nation either way it's not okay to have them have uh such influence on what people can and can't do like certain freedoms, constitutional freedoms, I think. Right. And so that's what doesn't matter whether it's a government or whether it's a corporation in general. I think we have to be cautious of that. And I think North Korea is a really good example of where um, that lack of awareness can go. Well, that's um, why like, I like when I when I talk to people and they'll actually talk to me, which most people do because they find out, oh, he's not so mean. Um, or though some people think I'm mean. I'm harsh. I can I'll be honest with people. Um, is, I'm glad I'm never harsh. Yeah, yeah, never. Um, <laughs> is is just to though, like bring it back to hey, like I I'm fine with you you living your life and making your choices the way you want. But where I draw the line is when either one of us infringes on the other person's rights. Because constitutionally, the government's not there to control. Never was. The government was only formed by the people in order to uphold the rights of the people. They are to uphold and protect the rights of the people. That's why protect. when yeah. people say like, hey, why do we need to spend so much money on this military? That is one of their main two things that they're supposed to do. It's protect the rights of the people and protect the people. That's it. Well, and I didn't I didn't expect this uh, this podcast to end up being an hour-long conversation about North, North Korea. Korea. Um, but I'm glad it did because and I how think we it don't want to be it. Yeah. And how we don't want to be it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really important. I don't, I don't have any other major things I want to say, but I do want to say guys, please, we have a link to that podcast. Yeah. Um, it's just, it just because dash. I named the episode this, you can't disappoint people. Can you tell them real quick about uh-huh. meat? Oh, meat. Yes. Okay. Real quick, a very fun study, or I guess it depends on whether you think it's fun or not. Um, so <laughs> there was a really, a really, really good uh, study that recently came out from, and um, from 21, stu- from 21 countries. It was a meta-analysis and it studied the association between unprocessed meats meat intake and cardiovascular disease. Mm. Um, and it was a, a large study. Like it took in, a, like, I think it was almost like 200,000 individuals. Right. Um, and cardiovascular disease, history, um, different. And they, they had different, like, um, incomes of countries, like from low, medium to high. When was this um, study down? Um, this was, I had it on here. I think it was, it was published like March 31st of this year. Okay. So pretty, pretty damn recent. Because there was a study um, way, way back when, and I cannot remember the dude's name, where he did the yeah, same March study. Yeah, March 31st of this year. He did the same study with very, very similar, but if you look and go through the data, which 
people should have understood by now, and I tell people all the time, it's like, I'm about the data and how good it was done. He removed mm-hmm. some of the data and came to a opposite conclusion for the sugar industry in the 60s. Oh, yeah, of course. And yeah. and so he removed the ones that made it look good and left the ones in that had a lot of heart disease and then said, red meat and fat make you have bad hearts. Well, so this is where it was. This was actually... I think this is a good way of distinguishing it, though, um, particularly with with red meats, um, mm-hmm. but meat in general. Um, they out of a group of I think it was it was close to 10,000 individuals specifically focusing on mortality rates for those that regularly consumed unprocessed red meat. There was no correlation between um, uh, cardiovascular disease and individuals that had a a diet consisting typically of red unprocessed meat. However, they did see a statistically significant higher correlation with cardiovascular disease and total mortality rates with people that did eat a red meat and that had, that was processed, that had um, higher processing, whether it was poultry actually included. So red meats, poultry, higher processing, did have a direct correlation I mean, okay. with cardiovascular disease. The, like, so I'm, glad, I'm super glad they did the study, but we should have all known that, like, right from the beginning. <laughs> like, processed pretty much anything, not a great thing to put inside. But it was good to see, like, no, it's like good. And, and, and consistency within the study that red meat, poultry, there was no association with it having a higher rate of cardiovascular disease. Yeah. Unless it was processed. Right. Right. Which, is, that, which is good. I for would say, see. I would say that's probably, I bet if they went and did the same study about like uh, vegetables and stuff that we grow today that you could consider highly processed just because it's been like off the charts changed. Right. That I, right. I bet there's a, a similar correlation there. Um, ha. Hops are better when processed. Yes. That's true, Josh. They taste delicious when they're super, processed. Super good point. Um, <laughs> well, although I, I and, say and, that... and when I say when I say processed, yeah. when I say processed, so like the term processed could technically mean you know if a food was like cooked or canned or frozen, right. like that's not what I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean when there's like fortified with certain types of preservatives in particular, that's typically where you see this higher risk factor coming in. Yeah, um, preservatives and certain types of sugars and certain types of um, well, it's, it's similar. Uh, it, like when people are like. Because people freak out because I don't eat bread. Most of the time, don't eat sugar. And, um, like, if you look at, like, flour, it says enriched. That literally means that they baked it, cooked it, ground it, and they removed everything that probably was good in it, I would argue, is not. Um, and then, because it had nothing in it, they had to put stuff back into it to kind of give it some nutrition. <laughs> yeah, well, so because processed <laughs> food, usually when you say add to it, like milk and juices, usually they'll say fortified. Right. And it'll be like they add calcium and vitamin D right. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's the same. That's what um, I was saying. That's why I was saying enriched flour. It's the same same concept. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. Um, Don't eat processed. Food, all right, guys. I got some TILs. Just you got any TILs, some, buddy? Eat red meat. That's my only TIL. Oh wait, before eat that I meat. told you I was going to show you a graphic. This kind of falls in line with TIL. I found this absolutely fascinating. I'm going to show it to you real quick, and then we'll go on to actual TILs. Um, but. I saw this picture on Twitter today, and I was like, "What in the world?" Because if you guys, if you go follow the like the our stock and commodity trades and everything, it's just constantly gone up, right? Like it, like it feels like, "Wow, does it ever go down?" I mean, obviously it does, but it's grown and it's way more than it used to be, right? I found this today, and this is a chart showing over time the growth of the market and different things that happened during those times. So look at this. From 1940 to 1980, it pretty much stayed like stagnant and was paper stocks. Like you, you traded with paper, right? And the Mm. old-fashioned way. When computers came around, it's to this red line. That's when the market went up, right? So we traded the the new way. And when this this next one from 2010 to 2020 is when Robinhood hit the market. (laughs) Okay. 
All right, but that that they could have added Robin Hood there. There's a lot of other things they could have probably added so, at that so time too. I think they're just using Robin Hood as an example. Like, but that's when online trading became open to people. So like oh, back in here, okay. you'd have trading. had to have okay. like a stockbroker and stuff like that. But they're saying so like now because it goes so fast, right? If you go watch some of those tickers, it's just like nuts, right? It's like what in right. the world is going on? And a lot of times they're not actually settled and they don't actually have the shares, and so you get these synthetics you get these naked positions you get all this crazy stuff going on because the computers are letting them trade stuff mm, that actually isn't physically there um yeah but then on on top of that they were like i know what we'll do we'll bring in dumb people to trade and we'll take their money that way and so they put on a little app on your screen and then the market fascinating. went bonkers crazy high that's really fascinating that's a great that's a great model i like it all right I will start off our TILs for the night, good sir. You go. I yes. will, indeed. Today I learned that <clears throat> Miami and Tampa are two of the three major cities in the United States that have never reached 100 degrees officially. Really? Is that wild? Miami and Tampa? Miami and Tampa never have been to 100 degrees. And guess what the third one is? Buffalo. 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 <laughs> I guess it's the Great Lake or something like that. Bustalo. It's kind of crazy, though. Buffalo. Yeah, never hit 100 degrees. Kind of cool. Uh, um, today I learned that while serving together in World War II, this is this is kind of a crazy story. I had to, follow, I had to read like six times. It's not, it's, we do have one that's the same. I don't think we have two that are the same. Maybe we do. All right. Twilight Zone that's creator good. Rod Serling's friend Melvin Levy ventured out to watch an aircraft drop off food crates. Levy was joking about where the food would fall when one of the crates landed on his head and decapitated him as Serling looked on in horror. Can you imagine watching your buddy's head get knocked off by a giant box? But can you imagine it being the, like, that Twilight Zone guy got killed that way? No, 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 no. It was his friend. It, was it his wasn't friend. the Twilight So maybe Zone that's, guy. What, that's what started. He's like, well. This is crazy. What else is crazy? Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, okay. This is kind of cool. Today I learned Harry Patch was the last surviving combat soldier of World War I to have fought in the trenches. He died at 111 years of age, one month, one week, and one day. At 1, That's 11 a.m. Cool. Yeah, prob probably, probably. No, I, yeah, I made that's that kind of cool, though. Today he learned he also died yeah. at 1, 11 a.m. <gasps> okay. Um... Today I learned that a scientist in Antarctica tried to murder his coworkers because his coworker because he kept revealing to him how his favorite books ended. It was the first arrest for attempted murder ever in Antarctica. Oh my god, that's hilarious. You know you're cooped up when that drives you to murder although you probably just he brought a couple books and you're like guess how that one ends guess how that one ends and he has nothing to do and he's just stuck there. that's hilarious that's all what a the ultimate troll right there is <laughs> to be like telling people how their books end while they're alone in antarctica and of course um, they would end up in antarctica the biggest troll of course yeah today i learned a 31 year old man was diagnosed with a fractured cervical spine caused by a virtual reality gaming due to rapid movement and the headset weight visual stimulus removed the brain's awareness of the perceived threat to self-harm allowing him increased rotation of the spine causing a fracture to the cervical spine so he fractured he broke his own neck by turning his head too rapidly while playing video games <laughs> That's how you know you're That's too incredible. committed. It's incredible. That's like probably one of the worst sport injuries. Like I'm, you wouldn't I mean, want to brag about. I'm that. I'm saying like from rapid motion. So like of course like if you're a race car driver you could break your neck, right? But it's not right. from like 
it's it's from an accident not from like repetitive motion <laughs> it's like you could get like you know something wrong with your spine or or whatever from repetitive motion driving the car but like the accident's not like it's you know, you know what i'm saying like but a repetitive yeah. motion i'll bet that's one of the worst repetitive motion it's injuries. insane it's insane it's insane it's crazy that's all right wild. hit me okay i don't have any more tils because we have oh, a okay, double one so it works out shower shower thoughts i'll go first ironically a mullet will protect you from having a redneck <laughs> that's a dad joke and i love it i love that um all right you can legally kick out this is an interesting thought you can legally kick out your own child at 18 with with nothing but with no like repercussions but be forced to take care of another adult you want nothing to do with after a divorce so like you can have a child raise them until they're 18 you don't have to keep giving them money but if you divorce somebody potentially you would have to be paying them for the rest of your life isn't that interesting or until you convince them to get married thought process or send them to yeah. antarctica and spoil all the books <laughs> yeah <laughs> so funny oh my all right gosh. hit me oh so good um okay people would probably read more than just headlines if excessive ads and paywalls didn't make online articles so inaccessible and difficult to read absolutely how many times has there been an interesting article I wanted to read? Nope, I ain't paying for it. Or, nope, or you get there and it's like, a sentence, press next. A sentence, right. press next. Yeah, so it's cheesy. Like, your, your site looks fake. See more. Like, See I know more. what you're saying is actually probably fine. It's just you yeah. look like a troll website. Super sketch, super yeah. sketch. Um, okay, the internet is the cruelest place on the planet, and it's not even an actual physical place. You could break that down a little bit. But I would argue it's still it, crazy. It's definitely real. I've seen Tron. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, um, I have the internet box. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's on it's, IT it's Crowd. Wireless. Yeah. The IT Crowd proved that the internet is in a box. If it's if there isn't actually a location, then why do they call it like the cyberspace? It's right. definitely in the name. There's space. It's there. The space between. It's yep. the space between, baby. I think. All right, hit I, me. I think there is. I think there is some space there. Well, they did rule that uh, Binance, the cryptocurrency exchange, its existence was indeed not an address, but the internet. Ooh, so it could not be regulated. Uh, in the ways that that's they were good. To. That's great. That's good to hear. Uh, if we colonize Mars. Every country on Earth will become a first world country. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like that. That's funny. Um, okay. If a week has a full health bar and loses health throughout the week, by the end of the week, it's if a the week? weekend. Oh. Yeah, like, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So like if a week has a full health bar, let's say, Mm -hmm. and loses health throughout the week by the end of the week it's the weekend <laughs> or Dad jokes. or it's weekend yeah it's weekend it is weekend yeah <laughs> i'm just fixing your dad joke oh thanks fixing the way they wrote the dad joke uh... Next one. <laughs> i only i only have one more by the way yeah me too Earlier, it was like, what does not kill you makes you stronger. Nowadays, it's what does not kill you mutates and then tries to kill you over and over again. Yeah, especially bacteria. Yeah. Um, I guess it was probably doing that back then, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The word, I like this, the word monopoly is technically an oxymoron. Mono, poly. It's kind of funny. Well, I think it's meaning like from one to from like many to one. Like it's, it's it's one. But, but you could be, go the other one way. One that should like, be many. Or or it's like one. Of many. All I think of I when I hear monopoly is, this is going to take a cool. lot of time. 
I think I've I think I've collected two hundred dollars. That's all I think about. Do not pass go. Go straight to Don't jail. Pass go. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It's thank you so real. much for tuning in. Really, really, really important to listen to that podcast. It's mind and life changing. It's important. Yep. Um, and, um, we hope you have a fantastic week and we appreciate you all and all your fun comments and, and we will be back on Monday. Monday, not Wednesday. We will be back on Monday. We actually just checked our schedule beforehand like adults and yeah. that's when you can catch us live. Should you choose yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's Tune that. in. We'd love to play with you guys. All right, guys. Have a yep. fantastic Give week. Give us a like. Stay share us if you like saucy. us. Or dislike us. That's fine, too. I don't care. Like, it, yeah, we're, just, we're still going to be here, you know? If yeah. you'd, yeah. Fun, fun fact. If you dislike us on YouTube, it actually makes us more popular. <laughs> That's fun for all the trolls we, out there. We will see you on Lunes, all right. ladies and gentlemen. See Peace you. Out.